sap green, and some kind of random colors here that I just have on my palette just for fun. Like I've got some cobalt blue, and this is like some greeny kind of cobalt color that I don't even really, I don't think I'll be using, but it's just there. So welcome everyone, and I'm glad if you're watching. It's always fun to paint on a live stream with you. So I'm just going to start by doing a little wash. I've got some transparent red oxide here, and I'll add a little ultramarine blue to it. And I'm just going to kind of put a layer of that down to get rid of that white. Get rid of the white canvas. So I'm just using a Viva paper towel to wipe that off. And once you get that wiped off, and on a slicker surface like this, you don't want a lot of that, it's just some turp. You don't want a lot of extra because um, it gets too, too slippery. So once I have that on there, I'm just going to switch to a smaller brush. I've got this number four flat. I'm just going to first of all draw in that little branch and I want to use a different color. So I'm going to mix up some ultramarine blue and a little bit of that quinacridone um, red because in the reference photo I see a bit of a purpley color so I thought that would be kind of fun to sketch that in with some of that purple. So just gonna mark in where the branch is. It gives me sort of a way of getting in, a, you know, the main grounding for where all the little lanterns are gonna hang from. So it's what I do if I paint a bird too, I'll put the stem in. And then I've got this little I think what I'll do is I'm going to paint these three together and leave this one out just for the composition. I think that'll be good. And so I'll add a few of those little branches and just get sort of, it'll probably change a lot, you know, as I start to paint the lanterns, but for now, get something going here. And I really love the the leaves on these things. They're so pretty. The way they kind of... Even these sort of dead ones are pretty. So I'm just going to sketch these some of these things in. Kind of warm up. You know, it's hard to get right into painting the way you want to paint. You have to kind of warm up a little. So... I'm going to just sketch and see where it goes. And if I make the lines a little bit loose, then when I paint the background in, I'll have some interesting marks. So you just sort of pick what you want to paint and then you can, you know, figure out where you want to go with it. Sometimes I'll add an extra leaf if these two, or I'll make this one a little larger to balance out these two. And then I'm going to sketch out where the lanterns are. So these three lanterns are what we're focusing on. I'm going to get a little bit of Indian yellow and a little bit of this transparent red oxide. Kind of mix that together, give you this sort of transparent kind of orangey color. So I'm gonna just maybe start with this guy here. And I'm just gonna sketch him in. I'm 
like that, sort of. And then this one comes up here. And down like that. And once I get them in, I can always see better where things should be going. So I can always adjust the drawing after. But I like using, starting off with the transparent, you know, color like this because I can wipe away easy if I don't like the drawing. There's no white on the canvas yet, so I haven't added something that will never... If you add white to your canvas right away, it starts to muck up all the other paint. If you don't, then you can still kind of take it away and add add back colors you want to add. But once you get white on there, it's just really hard to to do that. Okay, so... Um, now I've, I'm going to go and adjust this a little. Um, let's see. Sort of take away where there's the highlight on these. Like that. Hi, Marianne. Thanks for joining. And now, if the comments are uh, on here, and you and someone mentioned they block the the painting a bit, um, let me see if I can lower the camera a little. Maybe that's a bit better. Um, let me know if that's better, Corianetta. Is it Cora Tarita? I'll just call you Corey because it's too hard for me to pronounce. But it, yeah, I am, I did use some mineral spirits just in my mix when I wiped away. But that's it, I don't have any other medium here. Okay. Oh, Rita. Hello, Rita. Now I'll remember, now I'll remember your name. Yeah, so I hope that helped a little moving the camera down a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to block in some of the leaves. The leaves, I mean the leaves, the leaves. I'm just going to use a bit of this sap green with some Indian yellow. And that will give me a little bit of that golden color. So... So Rita is from Montreal <laughs> with a little cold, freezing cold emoji. I, I can tell you it's it's cold here too, but not, not as cold as Montreal. And so now I'm just going to kind of sketch these leaves in using this. It's like making your own kind of green gold if you add... Indian yellow and sap together. So I'm just gonna make some of those leafy shapes. And like I say, um, if you have any ideas for me that you'd like to see me paint on these live streams, just leave me a comment in the comments below. I also post these to my Patreon channel and on Patreon you can watch and do these little tutorials starting at $10 a month. Oh hello Eddie from Brazil and um, so once I get those leaves on there then I sort of I've got things blocked in I might just throw a something in there that I'm who knows maybe I'll leave it maybe I'll take away 
Also, I'm gonna put a few bits of that color in the background just to later on have little highlights that will show up when I add that nice background color here and there. So now I'm gonna get my paper towel and just sort of wipe some of this away because then when I add the thicker background paint, it will um, it will not mix up so much with the under paint. And I also like to kind of soften some of these brush strokes with my paper towel on the leaves. Gives a really nice effect too. And I'm going to shrink this one down a little bit just by wiping away. I got carried away and it's so easy when you're painting to kind of make everything the same size and that's what makes it kind of boring. If everything's the same size then um, it just gets kind of boring. So you have to take a look once in a while it happens when you paint flowers and everything. You have to kind of pay attention to um, your sizing. It's like your brain wants to make everything equal, straight. So I'm just kind of working now a little more on those lines. And this one here has to come a little lower cut some of the top off there. It's also kind of interesting when I'm painting for something like a live stream and I'm talking a lot. It's also kind of um, a bit more challenging for my brain. And this comes in. Okay, and now you just want to sort of work on the values. So I'm going to get some of that. I'll get you some of that um, transparent red oxide, and I'm just going to maybe a little little bit of brown oxide to darken it a bit and I'm gonna just put in a little bit of that darker center where that stem goes in. Kind of paying attention to the shape of the way it kind of comes up like that and I'll do the same back here. And this one, I can sort of see a stem coming down here. And just sort of work that in there. And here. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of that in the shadows. Like this. So I'm sort of building some of these um, little marks now on the using this color to sort of show those shadows and looking wherever there's sort of a darker, sh deeper shadow, I'm gonna put in some of that brown oxide to shape the next lantern. And then this one is more of an orange. I'll add a little bit of that orange to it. 
and some of the brown oxide just to get in that more, that deeper, warmer color. Thank you, Rita. I just saw that you made a nice comment there. It's just, uh, I do my best. It's a little tricky when I'm trying to, f f you know, film this because to get it set up, you know, with my cell phone recording and everything. But I did post the last week's one on on YouTube so you can go and watch it. And don't forget to subscribe um, to my Instagram as well as my YouTube. Okay, now I've got some of these shadows in there. And um, I'm not, well, I'm not using any medium now. And I'm also, um, the paint I use is mainly um, Winsor Newton and Gamblin. So that's kind of the two main some, I use some Utrecht, but mostly Windsor Newton and Gamblin. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this yellow ochre and sort of go in here and looking in the shadows, this sort of kind of yellow ochre-ish color here I'm putting in. very dark actually if you squint down and really look at the values and same over here there's some of that really dark along the edge and I'm going to use a little red oxide and really get in that shadow in here like that Okay, and now I can sort of um, get into some of the detail there. So I'll add a little bit of the, on the tip, some of that brown oxide. And same with this one. I'm going to add a little ultramarine blue to that just to darken it some more. And then this one here is too low for me to paint, so I'm just put that up a bit. And you kind of lose the stems, but you can put them back in and I'm going to add a little bit of that light now. I never want to start too soon, but I'm going to add a bit of that light orangey color. So I'm just mixing up some cad yellow light and a little orange. And we'll see for this one how that goes. And I'm going to blend it as I go down. Just softening that edge a little. And get some yellow. A little bit of that orange mix and get a, a little bit of a lighter mix of it and then I'll put some of that along that edge there and along the way when you're when you're painting on these smooth surfaces like this if something really um, oh yeah and I'm painting in, in this is oil I'm painting in if you can always say you darken that too much because it's such a smooth surface I can wipe away and kind of bring back that that light again. It's just another thing I can use, another tool I can use. I want to get that nice warm kind of 
shadow. So I'm to warm it up, I'm using a little alizarin in the mix just to really make it pop a little. And then I'm going to go and get some of that yellow mix, yellow and yellow ochre, just to get that real light one there. And then I'm going to wipe my brush and just sort of soften some of these edges here. And mix in some yellow ochre and orange and just get a little bit more paint on this in this area here. So I'm just kind of using a mixture of orange, cad yellow light, and um some yellow ochre for for these and just kind of me paying attention to the values that I see and using the edge of my brush with no paint just to pull away some of that that um, line there do the same here. So I'm just u literally using just a, the dry edge of my brush just to create a little bit of that detail. And and I don't like to do get overly detailed with everything, but I do want to make sure that the form of each one is really definitely there. This one has a little bit of an orange, sort of more deeper color here. And a little bit of kind of a light here. Just adding a little detail by removing, using the corner of my brush to sort of shape that paint a little. And then I want to really make sure I can see this edge here to show off the way that curves inwards. And so you kind of get the main values and and the shape and then you can add some of those little lines. So I'm going to get a little bit of that green gold and there's a tiny bit of that kind of in this one. And then I if you really squint down this is quite a bit darker here so I'm just going to Get some of that red oxide and that orange and I had a little bit I added a little bit of viridian green to it just to get that edge a little darker and I'm now just kind of blending it same with over there 
it's quite a bit darker than you think. And just adding a little more of that lighter mixture over here. Uh, yeah, I will put it onto YouTube. And then if you want to practice these videos, you can go on to my um, Patreon. And I have like... I have full-length lessons on how to paint birds and everything. Bunny rabbits, all kinds of really great lessons. And in each one you learn how to draw and mix color and paint. But it's not just, um, you know, you learn all the technique while you make a nice painting. So it's kind of fun. And the link is in my profile too, I think, for my YouTube. Okay, now I'm gonna start adding a little more life to those greens, so I added a little bit of that um, CAD yellow light to the, to the mix there, and I'm just gonna pop in some of that lighter green. It just really looks pretty. And it adds a little more, a little more going on with the colors. And this leaf has some kind of brown stuff on it. We can add a little bit just to mix it up a little. And I'm going to put in some of that light gray just to show you kind of what I mean with the background, you know, leaving some of that, um, leaving some of those colors around there. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this white and a little cobalt blue. And whatever's kind of there on my palette, I've got some of this purple. And you can apply it even with your your palette knife too, just to get it on there. And you can, you know, leave little bits of that lantern color that we had on there earlier. I'm just going to mix up another sh kind of color here using cobalt and a little bit of brown oxide and that'll give us a nice gray color too. You can sort of just put it down and this is I do this on larger scales is you can put the color down and then um, get your brush to spread it. So I'll just get a, a little bit larger brush. I've got this, what is this, a six flat. And these are Princeton Summit brushes. They're really smooth. And so it just, for when you're painting on this uh, surface that's very you know smooth you want to use a little bit softer brushes if you use a bristle brush you can really run into problems because the paint kind of gets pulled on and off again and get gets really annoying so you want to use sort of a smoother brush when you paint on a smoother surface So don't forget if you're watching, post any ideas that you have that you would like me to paint. I've got a few now, a uh, pink lily and 
Is that a water lily or a stargazer lily? I'm not sure. But something like a lily and a peony someone wanted to paint. And I do have lots of peony lessons on my Patreon channel. So I have many on there, pink, white, vases with them, all kinds, because people love peonies. So I do have quite a few lessons. And um, but I'm I'm going to paint more of these and do them live like this because it's kind of fun to be able to read the comments and get ideas of what people are you know what they're learning. Or want to learn so I'm just filling in now and just so you can sort of see why I put some colors down just to leave and make it look a little more exciting so it's not just one solid painted background it just looks a little more exciting than a f like a flat background It's hard to see the bottom. I've got it on this. Okay, so now you see a little better where I was going with those little bits of color. And now you can sort of go and I like to shape the branches a little bit more. And I'm doing this, you know, pretty quick for the demo, but you can take your time and sort of cut out the branches to make them less boring. And you can. Add little bumps just by you know how much paint you kind of take out this one's right near the edge <laughs> and it's really fun to go in and shape with using the background like that. And you can shape the leaves however you want. Give them a little more So um, now I'm just going to go in and sort of tweak the values a little more and um, I'll go back with a little brush just to go in and work the details a bit more. I've got this too flat and I'm going to get some of that transparent red oxide and just go in and darken the centers a little. And I will soften the edges by just dragging some of that into the background. But then I remember to wipe your brush, you know, each time so you don't get the white paint, the light gray paint in your background coming back and forth. So I'm just sort of softening that edge there. And there too. And I 
And another thing I wanted to, oh, I, because I'm so new to doing live streams like this, is the time of, you know, when is a good time to, to stream and all the rest of that. Sometimes it's tricky. So I'll have to take a poll <laughs> and find out when people are, when it's best to go live. So I'm just adding a little bit some darker greens. Now I added some darker to the insides of the the lantern flower, so now I kind of want to add a few darker greens. This one's really dark because it's kind of off going underneath here. And now I just want to go back to the branch because I started off with that line and it's just needs a little bit more work. So I'm going to get a little bit of that um, same mixture I used for the purple, the ultramarine blue and the uh, quinacrinone red that makes a nice purple. I'm going to mix up a darker version of it and add some darks so the branch isn't just one color, one value. So I'm just gonna go in and really add a few different values here and there just to make it more interesting. So that gives it a little more shape. Over here. goes over this leaf here and you can play with that and add a little highlight to that branch that goes above the leaf there there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a kind of a up light and little bit of a highlight here and I'm gonna just add a little bit more of a highlight here. Yeah, if the comments um, bother you going over the painting, it's really an Instagram thing. It kind of, when you do the live stream, you don't really have too many options, but later I, I will download the video and I will um, post it to my YouTube. So don't forget to go on and subscribe to my YouTube channel and then go back and in a few you know try to get I'll try to get it up in a few days the the video so you can watch it without any of the the comments So if you like these videos and you want to sign up for more lessons like this, you can on my Patreon channel and um, you can start painting birds and flowers and all kinds of fun things today. And um, I will hopefully be going live again next week, next Thursday. And... Um, so I am glad that you came out to see this live stream and I look forward to painting with you again soon and I hope you have a great rest of your week and uh, don't forget to follow and go to my YouTube and subscribe so you get to see the uploads there and have a great day.